All right. So today I am showing you how to make poppets. This is what we have always called them. You can call them yarn dollies or um, just dolls. Uh, they are fairly simple to make and you can make them quite simple or even simpler than this. Or you can get unnecessarily complicated like I did with this one. I tried to make this one look like Wednesday Adams, but we will see. I'll, I'll tell you what I did with this one um, as we go. But this one's the one I'm going to show you how to make. Now, this guy is supposed to be um, it's like a zombie zombie poppet. So that's why the colours have been picked. Now, you don't need to know how to knit. You don't need to know how to crochet. All you need to have is have the equipment. So we will put these out the way and I will tell you what you need. First thing you need is a hardcover book. Now, it can be any hardcover book. I will give you the size of this one in relation to my hand. Go like that. So I've got a reasonable size hand, not especially small, and it's about two inches longer than my hand. And the reason why we, I use a hardcover book is because you see this channel here? This makes it easier for you to get the yarn off later. All right. So we use a hardcover book. Doesn't matter which one. Good book, by the way, but anyway. And you need some cotton. Now, this is some cotton I got yonks ago. It doesn't matter which cotton it is. It's just cotton is a little bit harder than the wool you'll be using to make the doll with. So therefore, it will be able to be pulled tighter. All right. And you need an assortment of yarns in the colours that you want to make your poppet. So these are the ones that were in there from making this guy before. Um, I have added this bright green because I wanted the green to show a bit more. This one was a bit bit dull. I mean, yeah, he's a, he's a zombie, so he's not meant to be bright and sparkly, but I just want him a bit brighter. So the next thing you want to think about is what you want the main skin color to be so with this guy i wanted this grayish brown on the outside so that's the one we wind last um and then he had his his off guts and his green intestines so that they all sit within the middle and then when you plait them up they come out like this so we want to do I want this green on the outside as his skin, so we will do that last. I think what I'll do is I'll start with the red. That's all his off blood because he's, you know, he's going rotten because he's a zombie. <laughs> yes, my I used to make these for my boys when they were little, and they all ended up being zombies. So you you get that. So all you do, put your thumb here now. Before I start, if you want some hair at the top start with the yarn at the top of the book if you don't want hair at the top hold the yarn at the bottom now you can if you want just to make life a bit easier put the end in the book and hold the book shut and it just holds it enough to get started but I like having the raggedy the raggedy top knot so I just put my thumb on there and just wind around. Now, you don't want to pull your yarn really tight. You want it laying flat, but not under terrible strain. So let it glide through your fingers and wind around. Now, there's no hard and fast rule of how many times you wind. Uh, it's, it's what looks right to you. And the yarn tangles up, which it does. I just undo that. All right. So go around, I might do drop that on the floor and we'll give it a bit of time to untangle itself. So I am just going to do this. Um, I'll just keep the top in view so it doesn't make you look you dizzy. <sighs> Nothing like yarn that likes tangling itself up. I'll try again. So you keep going until your yarn pisses you off enough that you've had enough of it. But I will try and get a bit more out of this. All right. So if I hold this, just to give you a gauge of how much yarn, 
if I hold this, that's all my yarn. So I'm only seeing half the yarn here. So if I hold two of them, I can feel how thick that is. That's all the yarn, right? That's half of all the yarn, one leg and one arm. So I've got to get enough on the front here that feels like his arm and leg. Um, that's also accounting for changing colours and getting pissed off with the yarn that keeps tangling up. All right, I think a few more wines and that'll do because I will have had enough of it tangling. And again with the tangling. Right. Two, three, that'll do. Add enough. Tangled up too many times. So now I just cut this wherever. It doesn't matter. So both my ends are at the top. I'm holding them with the other hand. Now, do we want, we'll have a bit of the mustardy colour, uh, that end, which once again, I put my thumb on the two ends and wind around. No knots, you don't need any knots. Now, I'm going to do enough of the mustard that I can't see the red or I can barely see it. Just around and around. You don't need to do any knots. Doesn't doesn't need it. All right. See, we nearly can't see all the red. And once again, I'm not winding it real tight. I'm just letting it glide. All right, that should do. So cut that off. That's the mustardy colour. Now, I might put a bit of this greyish brown from before. Yeah. Where's the end that's attached? That one there. Take that away. And that's the one we use. So we just go like this. Now these look pretty murky colours. But you got to remember this is a zombie. So he's not going to be all nice pretty colours. And you can do any colours you like. You can even do... It's a good use for variegated yarns. Um, if you pair them with a skin colour. You can make a dress, which is what I did with the, the Wednesday one. So actually I might talk about that now because it's probably a good, uh, good idea. And you can put it down because you just lay it on the loose end. Now with, with the, the Wednesday doll I made, what I did is I started off with black. And then I wound white and then I wound black again. And what it did, the last black was just for her hair just for the plaits. The white is her whole body. Her whole body is white, so you can see it through the skirt and everything. And then the other black, if you can see up here, under her neck, I pulled it out and brought it down. I've, I've come back with the white thread to make like, tried to make like a checkerboard. Um, pulled it down and made the skirt with the inner black. You can see her hair there. I'll just push it down again. Yeah, so what that did is it allowed me to have little bits of the white showing through for skin. This is her dress. So all of the dress and the sleeves were the inner black. Pulled out at the back and then hung over the top. Um, I did add a few more strands on the skirt and I just looped it through the waist tie. With the sleeves, I put them down, then I tied the wrist, and then I used a wool needle to bring them back up again. So they will double the amount. And then I just tied a knot and hit them in the body. Uh, the collar, I just sewed that with a wool needle. So you, you can play around anything you like. Um, I am tempted to make an oogie, oogie, oogie bogey, oogie bogey one. Um, and a uh, night before Christmas, not skeleton, uh, what was the, Sally, Sally, the, the doll Sally. Um, I'd have to find a variegated that matches Sally's dress, but I think I could probably do that one. Another one that likes tangling. Don't you love it when your yarn's nearly finished and it starts tangling all the time? It's a good use, saying that, it's a good use to use up scraps. All right, so I don't want too much more of this because it's starting to piss me off with the knots. All right, that's it. I had enough of the knots. Just cut it off. 
throw it in the floor. Do it, deal with it later. All right, so now we're on the skin. Now, please don't make heaps of knots. That should be the inside yarn. So now this is the skin. So we want to make sure that we have enough to cover what's going around the box. And that will mean we'll have enough for it to be convincingly his skin. So we're just going around and around. And once again, it's tying knots without... Oh, honestly. Sometimes yarn just pisses you off. Another knot. Half this video is going to be me undoing knots. All right. All right. I just got to get enough so that you can't see any of the colours. We're pretty much there. Just a couple more for posterity. All right, let's just stop and we'll have a feel. Yeah, that feels about right. Okay, so we cut that off. Just leave that on the floor. So once again, remember, all my ends are towards the top here. So now we get the cotton and cut ourselves. It doesn't matter how long, generous amount. I'm not going to tell you how much because it doesn't really matter. And you just pinch up these and put the yarn through there. So it's underneath all of them. And then you slide it up to the top of the book. Into that groove I told you at the top of the book. Find your ends. Make them the same. Pull that up. Now yeah, that one's wanting to come back. And then where I like to do a surgeon's knot, which is over and then over again. And then tie it as tightly as you possibly can. Wrap it around your fingers and pull it in as tight as you can. And the surgeon's knot will hold on itself. And then we go again. All right. Now, if you can see, they're all tied together. That's not as tight as it could be, but it's enough. So now... We go down to the bottom. So I've turned it over and we're now going to cut along here. This is what the channel's good for. The channel between the, the two covers. And we just cut through the lot. Done. And remove the book. Don't need it anymore. And here is our top string. And our massive tassel body. <laughs> this is also a way to make tassels. So if you're into doing that. Now, because that's not as um, tight as I want it to be, I go like this. Just find the middle. That one's crossed. Is it crossed? No. That's too far though. There we go. That one, that one, that one, and that one. And I retie the knot. Just just to be sure you don't want it coming undone. So that one goes that way and then this one comes this way. Put the red together because that's his guts. And bring this to the top. Now that it's off the book, we can tie this tighter. Once again, do a surgeon's knot, double knots. And get that string out of the way. Wrap it around your fingers and pull away. And it's come in quite a bit more. All right, that's literally, I can't get that any tighter. And then do the other half of the knot. With the extra twist, it, it pulls on itself, so it will hold itself. 
All right, so with these, you can make these long enough that you can hide them within the body. But I like to have it able to be hung and carried. So I just bring the ends together. And tie a knot in the top. And that way it's got a little a carry thing, which is helpful when you're plaiting to be able to hang that over something and pull against it so your plaits are neat. Right, time to put the glasses on so I can see what I'm doing. So now I find all my little short pieces. There we go. Should be one of each colour on each side. So now there should be ones on this side. There's another one. There's another one. There's one, and come on, give me another one. Where's the red one? You can lose these also by making them the same length, but like I said, I like having a little tassel top. So I'll bring them up to the top and then spread the green around. The hanger there. So that's the majority of the green. Straighten it all out. Now what I like to do is to get all of these into the middle that are the hair and without picking up any other colours tie a little overhand knot So see that there? It's just a little overhand knot around the short ends of the yarn and that will become the hair later on. All right, so we've got them out of the body. Now it's just a little, because we're trying to do the green for the skin, it's just a little bit of faffin to get the green over the top. It's not going to be perfect. You need to add quite a bit more green if you want it perfect but as long as you get at least one side like this side looks like the best side so far one side where the majority of the skin color is covering at least at the top there we go so that's pretty good so now we cut ourselves another bit of yarn a uh, cotton Put that underneath here. Actually, what I might do is I might do it this way and then cross it over. All right. So I just crossed, I put it at the front and then crossed at the back. And then we want to shift it right up, shift it up to about there, pull it in tight and pull it off. <laughs> ah, geez. All right, so much for being smart. Flatten everything down again. This is this is not, uh, once you tie this knot, you can still play around with it a little bit. You're just getting it as nice as you can. And now you can't see what I'm doing, so I'll bring it down a little bit. There we go. So we just tried to make as much of the green on the surface as we can. We're not going to try and be smart this time because it pulled itself undone. Make sure your ends are about the same. Now you can put the head as big or as small as you like. One, two, surgeon's knot again, and then pull tight. 
tight as you possibly can because this will be his neck. <sighs> and then surgeon's knot again. Always do two surgeons knot together. That way they lock in. All right, so that you can see a few of those. You can just pull the green around, cover them up. You won't see them. Pull the, pull the strings a little bit to tighten everything up. All right, so this will be our front. Now, see the back? You can see a fair bit. It, it's all right. If, you, if I had more green in it, you would, you would see it better. Now, with these ends, you can leave them and do a little, little bow tie. Or you can get a wool needle and hide them within the body. It's really your choice. Um, uh, I might. I might hide them within the body. That way I can show you how I do it. Get ourselves a wool needle. So we just shred them up. Now, because we're not, we're not plaiting the torso, we just hide these. You just go, thread your needle, and then just go like this and go straight down and then pull it through. Do the same with the other one. And straight down. That way, we can just pull them tight. No one can see them. All right, so we've done that. That one's pulling up a bit. So the way you fix a loose string is if you can see it, which one's moving? Ah, there he is, that one there. There you go, hidden. <laughs> All right, so now that is our head done. Straighten everything out again. Now you want to separate his arms out. You're not going to get it perfect you just need approximately you want the middle to be slightly thicker than the arms so you just separate them with your fingers coming with your hands from the back okay so if they're not even these two slightly thinner than the middle pull the middle down and we'll try and make the green sit more towards the front so that he's got a green belly. You're going to see all his guts hanging out at the back. But you know, he's a zombie. They have their guts hanging out. Alright, that's pretty good. Lay them out. Pull that down as straight as you can manage. Making sure that you hide your cotton intestines inside. Get yourself another bit of cotton. Lay that underneath. Now, torso. Torso is longer than head. <laughs> so the head is about a little bit. It's about the width of my two fingers. So I'm going to do the torso the width of three fingers, approximately. And then we just pull it up and tie it. Surgeon's knot again. We love our surgeon's knot. Tight as you possibly can. Every knot you tie on this, as tight as you possibly can. This is why we're using cotton. Now, once again, you can hide these these cotton ends in inside, um, but you're going to be plaiting the legs, so I would just, you know, wait. So now you can break them apart. And you you don't actually have to plait. You can just tie, tie for the knee, tie for the ankle. You can tie. Um, I like to plait because it lasts a bit longer, uh, especially if you're going to give it to a kid to play with. The plaiting just protects it a little bit longer. So we'll just drizzle that into the middle along with the other one. Now, this is where you could do with a bit of weight. I don't have a weight on the table, so I'm going to do the best I can. 
that's to do the plaiting. So we'll just hide that in the middle if we can. Dig it in. Right, that's it. So you want to separate each leg. Try and get a good green on the top of each part. So that so they feel with your fingers fairly even amounts of the yarn and then start plaiting and if you know plaiting your alternating hands bringing the outside in um, there are a lot of youtube tutorials on plaiting so i'm not going to tell you how to do it and you just cross them over the one from there cross them over you bring in the middle one like this so this is a standard plait I do standard plaits on the legs because they're flatter and legs are fatter <laughs> fatter than your arms now I keep plaiting until I start getting a lot of ends which I'm starting to now and you plait as much as you can Okay, I can't do any more. So, and I'm starting to see the little ends. So just pull him a little bit out and hold that like that. Get ourselves another bit of cotton. Like so. Line the ends up. And then one, two. Start it off, pull it tight. All right. And one and two. Now, of course, a little bit gets caught in the knot. I'll just pull that out. All right. So that's his one leg done. Give it a bit of a wiggle. Now, you see there's one hanging out here. I just trim that doesn't matter take that out so the leg's straight all right so give him a bit of a wiggle because we didn't have any weight on the end this plait pulls up so just when you finish straighten it out again so we'll do the other one straighten all the pieces out try and tuck the cotton into the middle and separate them keeping a bit of green in each one Make them fairly even. All right, so. So if you got a, a, a chair with a knob on the top, knob, a bit on the top, you can hook, you can hook the bit of the head string on it and give you something to pull against to make your plaits neater. I don't have one of those on the table, so I'm doing the best I can. <laughs> and I'm going to say the cotton that I can see is his bones. They've been mangled. Which, that's what happens to zombies, as I'm told. They can't feel their bones getting mangled. <laughs> All right, so we are nearly getting too many ends. Yep. Get more cotton. Two. Squeeze that for a bit. It's on the wrong hand, so I couldn't crack. All right. And... That and that. All right, give them a yank. See now, they are not the same. They're not the same length. They're about one more twist off. We'll fix that in a bit. We're just getting the plaiting done. All right, now we got the arms. Now, what I do? I just quickly turn him over. Most of his back is the the red and the mustard. 
We're going to have this as his front because it's the lighter colour, which means his face will show up better. All right, so flatten these out. Now, I'm going to try and use the weight of my hand as a thing to pull against. So, get a good dispersion of the greens so they're not all in one spot. Separate them into three parts that are reasonably easy. Now, as I said before, for the arms, I like to do a reverse plait. Now, you're going to say, mm -hmm, yeah, right. Normally, you go like this. For reverse plait, we're going from the center out. Okay, so we're going the opposite way. It's not really working to pull against, but anyway. That's it, like that. Quite awkward to do when you don't have anything to pull against. Now the arms are going to be way longer than you need, but you can fix that after. We just got to get them plaited. Sorry if it's a little bit hard to see, but I've got to try and keep the tension on the. There we go. Now we got it. It's easier when you're plaiting someone's head because you can pull against, they can pull against you. And you're saying, why, why did she reverse the plaits? Well, what it is, when you go from the middle out, I'll show you in a little bit. You don't have to do it this way. You can just do normal plaits. It still looks nice. It's just the way I like to do it. I'm just pulling down as I go because because I don't have any weight on it. It's um, making it look weird, but it's not wrong. It's just looking weird. And you don't want to let go like I just did because then you lose the one you just did. All right. That'll do. Pull them flat. A little bit wibbly. You won't have, you'll have a nicer plait if you can pull against something. Okay, so cut this longer than we need. One and two. Excuse me, I need my third hand. Ugh. All right. One, two. All right, so hold him there. It's a bit wibbly. We can just say that's his elbow. Just give it a bit of a think. That's a bit better. Now, like, like I said, way too long. You probably want it, if you hold your own hand, you probably want the wrist about here because my own hand reaches about mid-thigh. But we'll leave it like that at the moment because we've got to do the other side. <laughs> but as you can see, he's starting to be a person. And doing the uh, plaits behind has sort of given him a bit of a shoulder here. Whereas this plait, they sink in. I mean, we want them to sink in for hips because what they do is they make it flat here, whereas this has come to the side. It's, it's a personal preference thing. You don't have to do it. So now we are going like this. Spreading out our greens a little if we can. Come on. There we go. So get it into three. Like so. That feels about right. Now, remember we are... Reverse plaiting it. Once you get a little bit going, you can hold the plait. 
that makes sense. What's that one doing? That's it. So you can hold where they cross. See, I'm holding it. I'm sure professional hairdressers have another knack of doing it. I'm just, this is the way I do it. <laughs> I'm sure there's an easier way. If you know of an easier way to do a plait while well, you've got nothing to pull against, um, let me know. This is all I know. Nearly done. This one's going much better than the first one. You just got to remember your um, pattern of how to plait and then you can do any kind of plait. And one more. And one more on that side. All right, that'll do. Straighten him out. Get yourself a bit of yarn. And like I said, you don't even have to plait. Even with the um the arms, you can tie at the elbow, tie at the wrist, and not have them plaited at all. I have seen that done. That's that works just fine. It just for me makes a less less life in the doll. If you know what I mean. One and two. Use the third hand just to... Uh, and then another one, one and two. I only need the third hand for the first knot. Second knot holds itself. All right, so we now have our little dude. And he's got his arms and legs. Now, all you do to shorten them is just tie another bit of string higher and then cut where your string is uh, I could probably show you one I don't I don't tie a thing for the elbow because I've plaited them if I wasn't plaiting them I'd have to tie an elbow so let's just do one for one side so you can see so about mid thigh so if that's his whole leg we'll bend him in half that's his knee mid thigh is about there so you just Bring that up, and because this is already plaited, I don't need the third hand. One and two. Right there. Everything tight as you can possibly make it when you're tying the cotton. Right. And then, that's his wrist. So his hand, I'm going to cut it here. Because what I'm going to do later on is I'm going to fluff it out. So it's a little bit long still, but it'll do. Of course, if you've plaited it, they're not all going to be the same length because they cross each other. So we just tidy that up a little bit. All right, get them out of the way. All right, so that's his, that's his arm now. It's much better length. So I'll do the same with the other. And then you, all you do... To, like with the legs being the different length, I will bring this one up to that one, not this one down to that one, because I put it as soon as I started having um, short paces. So we'll just leave that for now. Now we go to the face. Now you just need a, a wool needle. I like to do the faces in black, as you can see by this dude, especially for zombies, because it doesn't matter. But you can do any kind of face you want. And you can even do, like I did with the Wednesday doll, I had some doll buttons. And I just did eyes and a little square red one for the mouth. It's a bit crooked. And her nose is just sewing thread, just a stitch of sewing thread. Sewing thread. So you can do buttons. They're good, as long as you secure the back. Um, but I do like doing, on especially on zombies, just... Just to your wall. So we are going to do his eyes first. Double your thread. 
tie the ends together. Now make yourself a donkey knot. So that's around and then roll it off your finger holding the end. And that makes a donkey knot right at the end. It takes a little bit of practice. <laughs> now to get, I'm going to put eye, eye and mouth. I come from the back and I go under the neck and out where I want the eye to be is right there. Pull it out. Now you're going to have a dot there so you go down with the nail and pop it and hide it in the back of the neck. Now because this is all yarn you can't just leave it at that. You have to take a little stitch. Just a little stitch through a couple of threads and then back through there. It makes a loop and makes a knot which will sit on the surface. And then we want to go in and then out where we want the second eye to be. Now don't pull this too tight otherwise you'll lose your eyeball. There you go. So once again take a little, little stitch either side. Go like that and then back through your loop. Pull it slowly. Hold the hold the yarn of the head down so that it's not um, pulling up too high. And then we go here and then we're going to go down to the beginning of the mouth. Make sure that's not pulling down too much. Now, just go across and lay it, lay it over and go back in. You're going in where you want the end of the mouth to be. And we're coming out about a third away from where the beginning of the mouth was. Now just use your needle. You want this loose. You don't want this too tight. There we go. And I just go over the loose yarn and then go down to a third away from the end. Let's bring that up so you can see it. Pull that in. Nice and slow. Lay down the mouth under your stitch. These are just stay stitches to keep the mouth in place. And then we'll go through and to the back. So we're coming out at the back just near where we went in. Use your needle to pull the mouth down where you want it. And there's the face done. And then at the back, we'll just take a stitch. Now I'm going to stitch this around the neck um, string just so I can make a knot. This can be uh, the original bite. And pull that tight. Make sure the face hasn't gone too tight. Pull it out with your needle if you have to. Yep, that's better. That's a bit of fluff. It's not wrong. And then drop that inside the body. Like so. And that's coming out. So we just tuck that back in. There we go. And cut that off. All right. So that's our little face done. Doesn't have to be fancy. You can do any kind of face you like. Like I said, use the cotton. Now with the ends, what I've done with these is I've used a dog brush. Now, I don't have it with me today, but you just brush. It's those little fine, um, what do you call it? They're like little tines and they're bent backwards. They're a grooming brush for a dog. And you just brush at it. This is just acrylic thread. It doesn't have to be fancy thread to be able to brush it out. So that's all I do with that. But what you can do, if you don't have one of those brushes, is don't cut your hanging thing. Cut these all around the same length. And then just use your wool needle to separate the plies. You can do it with your hands if you want, but wool needle... And you work down from the end. Once you've got enough, you should be able to just separate them. And you can do that. 
and that'll give him crinkly hair. It won't give you the, the raggedy hair, but it will give you crinkles. If you can see that. So you do a couple. And you can do it with your fingers, depends on the, the yarn. This is a quite a soft yarn, so with my fingers it's fine. Hold at the bottom, spread it apart. And that'll give you your, your scraggly hair that you have. And that is how you make the yarn doll. Um, I'll just show you a bit close up of them on her. So they are just around the wrist. So you've gone down, around the wrist thing, back up and then a knot. And it's made like a ruffle around, made her shoulders more pronounced. And then I came back with the white thread and wove in and out and in and out all the way around to make this more of a bodice than just an open body. And then with the skirt, um, I did split ply back stitch, which is make a knot, go through the ply and then back over it, through the ply and back over it. And then it just joined it all up as a skirt. And I'm sure there's another way to do it. That was just the only way I could think to do it. And her really long plaits. And I just back stitched over the join at the back of the head so you couldn't see any of the skin. And that's it. I hope this tutorial was helpful. We now have Wednesday and her goblin friends or zombie friends. And I hope that you find it useful to make your own poppets. And thank you for watching. <laughs>